Good day, and here is Azia News for today. Cambodia deploys new army recruiting rats to sniff out old land mines. Cambodia deploys a new army of rat recruits to sniff out old land mines as part of a national plan to boost demining operations. The African giant poaches rats imports from Tanzania and have undergone intense training to smell and detect explosive devices. According to Saul Malen, one of the demining rats handlers, the returned rodents offer 100% accurate results with their extraordinary sense of smell. A total of 20 new rat recruits deployed since June, replacing a generation of recently retired demining rats, which includes hero Rat Magawa. Magawa was given a gold medal last year for his life-saving bravery and devotion to duty by United Kingdom-based veterinary charity PDSA. He found 71 landmines and 38 items of unexploded ordnance during his five-year career. Magawa is now living at Apopo, the charity which training rats and dogs to detect landmines as well as tuberculosis. According to his handler, Tanzanian national Shafim Hanyu, Magawa is now enjoying a more relaxed lifestyle at Cambodia's Apopo Center. PDSA says Cambodia has one of the highest number of mine amputees per capita in the world, with more than 40,000. Major Japanese airlines start vaccinating their employees for COVID-19. Japan Airlines starts vaccinating their employees to combat pandemic in the country. Company representative says they plan to vaccinate 36,000 staff, while all Nippon Airways plans to vaccinate 46,500 of their staff. Neither companies specify a time frame for the vaccinations. Around 190 Japan Airlines employees received the first shot of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine. Japan's Land Infrastructure Transport and Tourism Minister Kazuyoshi Akaba says that vaccinations for major companies are originally scheduled to start on June 21st, but he requests for airlines to start as early as possible. Japan is racing to speed up inoculations before the start of the Tokyo Olympics in July. Japan lags far behind other advanced economies in vaccinating its people. 12% have received at least one shot of last week. According to a Reuters tracker, compared to France, the next lowest in the group of seven industrial powers at 42% and the most advanced, Canada, at 63%. Indonesian cities bring vaccines to people from inoculation buses after cases rise in the country. A city in northwest Indonesia is bringing COVID-19 vaccines to its people with a growing fleet of inoculation buses as the country faces a spike in infections after a major religious festival. Authorities in Pekanbaru on the island of Sumatra have doubled to 10 the number of buses since launching the program on June 1st. Indonesia's sprawling archipelago of 270 million people is bracing for a peak in coronavirus infections after Idol Feeder Festival last month. The government of Pekambaru capital of Riau province says the buses have administered 12,000 doses of China's Sinovac vaccine and are now giving over 1,000 shots a day. Authorities say they plan to increase the number of buses further but have not said by how much. The authorities also explain they must fight misinformation about COVID-19 vaccinations. Indonesia plans to vaccinate 181.5 million people by next year, use Sinovac vaccine and AstraZeneca vaccine. Malaysia extends lockdown for two weeks after increasing cases of pandemic. Defense Minister Ismail Sabri Yaqub says the Malaysian government decided to extend the current restrictive measures for two weeks to slow the spread of COVID-19.
Ismail Sabri, who coordinates the implementation of COVID-19 restrictions in the country, says the decision made after taking into account the number of daily cases. A nationwide lockdown has been effective, which bans all economic and social activities except essential services. Malaysia reported 6,849 new infections, bringing the national total to 646,411. Another 84 deaths are reported, bringing the death toll to 3,768. Protests calling Yangon to mark the Che Guevara's birthday. According to social media posts, pro-democracy supporters go to the street of the main city of Yangon and chanting, we want democracy. A video obtained by Reuters shows some activists holding portraits of Che Guevara as they march on the street as part of the protest holds to coincide with the birthday of the Latin American revolutionary who became an international icon after his death. The trial of Myanmar's ousted leader Aung San Suu Kyi, also set to start as the junta that overthrew her elected government, rejected criticism by the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights over its use of deadly force against protesters. According to the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners, Myanmar's security forces have killed at least 862 people during the crackdown on protest since the coup. Police of Italy arrest men allegedly involved in Vietnamese drug deaths. Italian police says they arrest a Romanian citizen who is the subject of an international arrest warrant for the manslaughter of 39 Vietnamese people who are being smuggled into Britain. In statement, police says Stefan Damian Dragos allegedly provides the truck which used to smuggle the group of migrants who were found dead in a freight container on the back of the vehicle in October 2019. The suspect was arrested in the town of Cinicello Balsamo, north of Milan, but police gave no further details. The discovery of so many dead people, two as young as 15, in the back of the truck on an industrial state to the east of London shocked Britain and Vietnam. It also shone a spotlight on the illicit global trade that sends the poor of Asia, Africa and the Middle East on perilous journeys to the West. In January, four men who admitted or were found guilty on manslaughter and immigration offences were given long jail sentences. United Kingdom and South Korea agree to strengthen security relationship. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson met with South Korean President Moon Jae-in on the sidelines of the G7 summit in Carbis Bay. During the meeting, the two leaders agreed to increase links across trade, security and defense as the United Kingdom strengthens its ties with the Indo-Pacific region. The group of seven countries is made up of the United States, Britain, Canada, France, Germany, Italy and Japan. Moon is among the leaders of guest nations invited to the summit alongside Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who joined via video link. G7 leaders of wealthy nations began their three-day meeting in Cornwall, discussing about issues ranging from COVID-19, vaccines and economic recovery to climate change and geopolitics. China urges United States to protect legitimate rights of children and other vulnerable groups. Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lijian at a routine press briefing in Beijing says China urges the United States government to take concrete measures to eliminate the serious problem of child labor and forced labor in the United States. The World Day Against Child Labor, the issue of child labor in the United States has been widely criticized at the 109th session of the International Labor Conference. Zhao says the problem of child labor in the United States is shocking both in history and at present. 
Zhao adds, the United States is the sole country in the world that has not ratified the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. It has ratified only two of the eight core conventions of the International Labour Organization, ILO, making it one of the countries that have ratified the fewest ILO conventions. Meanwhile, the spokesman says the ILO has repeatedly expressed its concern about the child labor problem in the United States and urged the United States government to address the issue of forced labor. We hope that the United States side will take concrete steps to eliminate child labor and forced labor in its tobacco and other industries and protect the legitimate rights and interests of children and other vulnerable groups. Japanese government condemns South Korean exercises near Takashima. Japan condemns the drill conducted by South Korea's military around a set of disputed islands and says that it has strongly protested the neighboring government and demanded immediate cancellation. Tokyo and Seoul have been at odds over the sovereignty of the isles called Takashima in Japan and Dokdo in South Korea, which lie about halfway between the neighbors in the Sea of Japan, also known as the East Sea. Kato also denies a media report that South Korean President Moon Jae-in is arranging a visit to Japan timed with the Tokyo 2020 Olympic as well as talks with Japanese Prime Minister Suga. The Blue House is hoping that Moon will hold his first ever talks with Japanese Premier Yoshihide Suga during his stay. Ties between South Korea and Japan have soared in recent years due to the disputes over wartime history and trade. Philippines drug war victim's family hoping to get justice for his son's murder. The mother of a victim of the Philippines' drug war hopes achieving justice for her son when she learned about an international criminal court prosecutor's request for a formal probe into the killings. Her 23-year-old son was killed in May 2017 for allegedly resisting arrest during a sting operation. The International Criminal Court prosecutor asked the court in what human rights groups described as a landmark step toward justice to allow a full investigation into the killing in the brutal war on drugs which Duterte unleashed when he took office in 2016. Since then, Philippine security forces says they have killed 6,117 suspected drug dealers because they fought back violently, but rights groups say authorities have summarily executed drug suspects. While his spokesperson said Duterte, who in March 2018 cancelled the Philippines' membership of the ICC's funding treaty, will not cooperate with the probe. Under the ICC statute, it has jurisdiction for crimes committed while a country was a member until a year after it sought to withdraw, in this case between 2016 and 2019, when the Philippines' pullout became official. And that's the wrap-up for today. We will see you again next week. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a lovely weekend.